Lesson 1, Polygon Formulas. Take a moment to write down these four steps that you should follow when solving these problems in this lesson. One, you should always draw a picture. Two, what shape is involved? What dimensions are we looking for? Three, what formula might help us to solve this problem? And four, you're ready to find the solution. Pause this video so you have a chance to write down these steps. Example 1. Kyle walked a square path around a mall for a total of 1,760 yards. What is the side dimension of the mall? So first we're going to draw a picture. And I'm going to draw a square because that's the shape that I'm looking for is a square. What dimensions are they talking about? Well, squares are made up of four equal sides. And they told us that the total path around the square was 1,760 yards. So that is my perimeter. So I know that my perimeter is 1,760 yards. And to find the perimeter of a square, I use the formula P equals 4 times S, and S stands for the side. And a square has four sides that are all the same, so 4S represents all the sides to give me the perimeter. Well, they already gave us the perimeter, so we can exchange 1,760 for the P. So that will give me 1,760 equals 4S. And I just need to figure out the length of one side of the square. So I'm going to divide by 4. And 1,760 divided by 4 equals 440. And 4s divided by 4 equals s. So one side of this path is 440 yards. Example 2. Darius used 72 feet of fencing around a square garden plot. How long is each side of the garden? Again, I'm going to draw a picture. And it's a square, so I'm going to draw a square. He used 72 feet of fencing around the square garden. So again, 72 is my perimeter. How long is each side? I'm going to use the same formula again, P equals 4S. Again, I know what P is. P is 72, so I exchange the P and put a 72 in its place. So I get the equation 72 equals 4S. I solve for S by dividing both sides by 4. 72 divided by 4 is 18. And 4s divided by 4 is s. So one side of the garden is 18 feet. Example 3. Mr. Farmer has a rectangular lot that measures 230 feet long and 460 feet wide. If he wants to install a fence around the perimeter, how many linear feet of fencing will he need to purchase? So first, I'm going to draw his rectangular garden. I'm going to label the parts. It's one side is 230. The other side is 460. He wants us to figure out how, what's the perimeter, how much around, how much fencing does he need to buy to go all the way around. Well, the formula to find perimeter when you're talking about a rectangle is P equals 2 times the quantity of length plus width. Well, I know the length. That's a cursive L. 
and I know the width. The length is 230, the width is 460. So I'm just going to plug in those two numbers into this formula. I don't know P this time, so I'm just going to put P equals 2 times my length, which is 230, plus my width, which is 460, and I'm going to solve for P. 230 plus 460 is 690. So I have P equals 2 times 690, and 2 times 690 is 1,380. So the perimeter equals 1,380 feet. Example 4. Bob has a piece of paper that measures 12 inches by a hundred by 20 inches. What's the area of the paper? Well, that sounds like a rectangle to me, so I'm drawing a rectangle. I'll label the 12 and the 20. And the formula to find the area of a rectangle is A equals length times width. Well, in this problem, length is 12. Excuse a little dot, my pen is jumping. And width is 20. So my area is going to be 12 times 20, which equals 240 inches squared. Example 5. Randall's bedroom measures 12 feet by 10 feet. He wants to lay carpet squares to uncover the entire floor area. How many carpet squares cover, it, or sorry, each carpet square covers four square feet? How many carpet squares will he need to cover the floor? So we have to do two things here. We first have to find the area of his floor. It's the first thing we have to do. And then the second thing we need is how many carpet squares it does he need to buy? So we have two things we have to do. So first we're going to draw a picture of his floor. And his room is a rectangle. And it measures 12 by 10. So my length is 12. My width is 10. And I can find the area by multiplying length times width. So 12 times 10 will give me an area of 112 feet squared. But he wants to buy carpet squares. So how many of these squares does he need to buy to cover the floor in his room? Well, one carpet square covers four square feet. So if we just take the 120 and divide it by four, that'll tell us how many squares he needs. So 120 divided by four equals 30. So he needs 30 carpet squares. Number six. There was a leak in the ceiling that left a circular ring with a diameter of three feet. What is the area of the wet spot? So first I'm going to draw a circle. And I know that diameters go from one side of the circle to the other. And this diameter measures three feet. And we need to find the area of the circle. Well, area of a circle, the formula is pi r squared. But they didn't give me the radius, r. They gave me diameter, which is d. Well, I know that the diameter
when cut in half, is the radius. So if the diameter is 3, when I cut that in half, I get 1.5. So my radius is 1.5. So I go back to my formula. A now is going to equal pi times 1.5 squared. Now if you don't have a calculator that has a pi button on it, you can always use 3.14 to represent pi. If you have a pi button, I would suggest you use that instead. And in class, we'll be using the pi button on our calculator. But for here at home, we'll use 3.14. So in my calculator, I'm going to multiply 3.14 times 1.5 times 1.5. And when I do that, uh, and I round to the hundredths place, I get 7.07 .07 feet squared. If I need to round because I have too many numbers after the decimal point, I will always round to the hundredths place, which means there will be two numbers after the decimal. This is the tenths place, this is the hundredths place. Example 7. If the area of a circle is 100 meters squared, then what is their circumference? So we draw a circle. This time they didn't tell me anything about it. I mean, they didn't tell me the radius or anything, but I'm going to draw a radius. They did tell me that the area is 100 meters squared. but they want me to find the circumference. The formula for circumference is 2 pi r. 2 and pi are just numbers. So if I knew what the number r was, then I'd be able to find my circumference. And I can do that using this area 100. I know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. And for this circle, I know that A is 100. So if I substitute 100 in place of the A, I get 100 equals pi r squared. I now can solve for the radius and use that answer in the, form the circumference formula. So first, I'm going to divide both sides by pi, which is 3.14 if we're at home and don't have a pi button. 100 divided by 3.14 is 31.85. Pi r squared divided by 3.14 is just r squared. I now need to take the square root of both sides to figure out what r equals. When you take the square root of something that's squared, this 2 and this square root symbol cancel each other out and leave the r behind. And in my calculator, I did the square root of 31.85, and I rounded my answer to get 5.64. I now have a radius that I can use in my circumference formula. So I'm going to take this 5.64 and plug it into the R. So I will get C equals 2 times pi times 5.64. And when I multiply that all together, I got 35.44, which I rounded to the hundredths place. So my circumference equals 35.44 meters. Example 8. A small trivet, circular trivet, has an area of about 19.625 square inches. A large circular trivet has a diameter twice the size of the small one, 
What's the approximate area of the larger trivet? What is a trivet? A trivet is a hot pad, something that you, when you take something out of the oven and it's hot, you set it on. So it's a hot pad. Some people use a towel. Some people have really fancy trivets. Some people have trivets that are so fancy they hang them on the wall as decoration. So we know we have a small trivet. And then we have a large trivet that's twice its diameter of the small one. So the diameter here is twice as big as the other one. They tell us that the small trivet has an area of 19.625 square inches. Use that information to figure out the area of this trivet. Well, we know that the formula for area is pi r squared. So I'm going to use that information to find my radius. I'm going to substitute 19.625 into A. And solve for the radius. So first I will divide both sides by 3.14. And 19.625 divided by 3.14 is 6.25. And pi r squared divided by 3.14 is just r squared. I want to solve for r, so I need to take the square root of both sides, which will give me a radius of 2.5. Well, if my radius is 2.5, that means my diameter is 5. And if the diameter of the small trivet is 5, that means the diameter of the large trivet, trivet is twice that size, so this diameter will be 10. So to find the area of this circle, I'll use the same formula, area equals pi r squared. but I need the radius. Well, if my diameter is 10, then my radius is half of that, which is 5. So I'm going to put 5 squared into my formula. So pi times 25, because 5 times, I'm sorry, 5 squared, 5 squared is 25, and my pen is acting up, excuse me. And pi times 25 is 78.5 inches squared. Well, my pen was working so well until just now. Example 9. A rectangular swimming pool measures 35 yards by 22 yards by 6 yards deep. What's the volume of water that can fill the pool? Well, rectangular pools look something like this. And this one is 35 yards by 22 yards, and it's only 6 feet deep. The formula to find volume is L length times width times height. For this problem, my length is 35, my width is 22, and my height is 6. So I plug those numbers into the formula, 35 times 22 times 6, and I get a volume of the pool, it's 4,620 cubic yards. Number 10, example 10. A landscaping company built a concrete retaining wall that was three yards long, two yards high, and 12 inches deep. How many cubic yards of concrete did they use to build the wall? What's wrong here? Three yards long, 2 yards high, 12 inches 
deep. We need to convert this to yards. So to convert 12 inches into yards, we just divide it by 36 because there's 36 inches in a yard. So let me do a little side work over here. 12 divided by 36 equals 0.3 repeating. So I'm going to draw my picture. This is not a very thick wall. It's three yards long, two yards high, whoops, and 0.3 yards deep. So my length is three, my width is 0.3 repeating, and my height is two. Use the formula length times width times height. And I'll get 3 times 0.3 repeating times 2. And when I multiply that all together, I got 2 cubic yards of concrete that they'll need. Example 11. The volume of a cylinder is 170 cubic inches. The cylinder is 6 inches high. If the radius of the cylinder was increased by 2 inches but the height remained the same, what would the volume of the new cylinder be? So we've got two cylinders. We've got a little one, and then we've got one that's got a bigger radius. Its radius is increased by 2. But they're both 6 inches high. And neither problem told me what the radius actually was, though, except that this one's two inches longer. It did tell me that the volume of this cylinder is 170 cubic inches. And they want me to find the volume of this second cylinder. Well, the formula to find the volume of a cylinder is pi radius squared times height. So let's plug in what we know. We know the volume is 170 pi radius squared times 6 for the height. I'm going to divide both sides by 6. 100 divided by, uh, sorry, 170 divided by 6 is 28.3 repeating. And pi r squared 6 divided by 6 is just pi r squared. All right, this is going should start looking uh, familiar now. So we're going to divide both sides by pi. Done this a couple times already today. I'm going to have to go over here to write my answer. 28.3 repeating divided by 3.14 is 9.0202. And pi r squared divided by 3.14 is just r squared. Now remember I need to square both sides to get rid of the r squared part because I want just r. And I'm going to round this and I get a radius of 3. So the radius of the first cylinder is 3. Now it said the second cylinder's height didn't change but its radius was increased by 2. So if I increase this radius by 2, the new radius becomes 5. They want us to find the volume. Using the same formula, V equals pi r squared times height. And we plug in what we know. So pi times 5 squared times 6. So V equals pi times 25 times 6. Stick that all in my calculator and I get 
So the volume of the bigger cylinder is 471 inches cubed.